In August 1856, workmen digging in a limestone cave called Feldhofer in Germany's Neander Valley uncovered the fossil remains of an unknown creature. At first they thought the bones were those of an ancient cave bear, but a local naturalist identified them as human. The Feldhofer cave yielded an impressive selection. The skull cap, bones from both arms, part of the pelvis, and fragments of the shoulder blade and ribs. Some of the bones looked strikingly different from those of modern humans. The arm bones were heavily built, and large brow ridges protruded above the eye sockets on the skull cap. Geologist William King recognized the distinct anatomy of this specimen from the skull cap. Even without facial bones, he decided these fossils fell outside the range of modern humans. In 1864, King named the new species Homo neanderthalensis. When you say the word Neanderthal, people automatically picture a brutish caveman shuffling around with his knees bent holding a club. Yet it would be wrong to think of the Neanderthals as a primitive, less evolved version of modern humans. For over 200,000 years, they were a well adapted, highly successful species in their own right. They probably evolved in the cold, periglacial climate of Europe, which remained the center of their range thanks to barriers of geology and climate. During the 20th century, dozens of sites across Europe and Western Asia have yielded hundreds of Neanderthal fossils. Their relative isolation in this region allowed the Neanderthals to evolve a unique set of behaviors and anatomy that sets them distinctly apart from modern humans. Ever since the discovery of the first Neanderthals, anthropologists have wrestled with what might seem a simple question. Were they one of our direct ancestors, or were they a side branch that went extinct without contributing any of their genes to modern humans? Paleoanthropologist Ian Tattersall of the American Museum of Natural History feels strongly that the fossil bones give us the answer to that question. Neanderthals are distinctly different from modern humans, particularly in the structure of the face and in the structure of the brain case. The Neanderthal skull was long and low instead of being high and short, the way the skull of the Homo sapiens is. Homo sapiens has a little face that's tucked underneath the front of the skull. The Neanderthals had a big face that protruded in front of the skull. All through the body skeleton, there are distinctions between them. And us. We're closely related species, but we're very different species. Kathy Willermet, a PhD candidate in the Department of Anthropology at Arizona State University, is researching Neanderthals and has a different idea on their status. No one is suggesting Neanderthals evolved into modern humans. What we're suggesting is that Neanderthals were an ancient population that blended with early modern humans moving into the area. Over time, the population of Neanderthals, as a distinct population, went extinct, although Neanderthal genes have continued on and may be with us today. At the very center of the Neanderthal range is a site called Vindija in Croatia. At this site, we see several Neanderthal occupation levels spanning thousands of years. In the early Neanderthal levels, the fossil evidence shows your typical classic Neanderthal features. But in the later levels, we find something very interesting. The Neanderthals are showing facial features that look very much like early modern humans. And this suggests to me they are interbreeding with early modern humans. The Neanderthals have been very, very successful throughout Europe and Western Asia for a couple of hundred thousand years. And then they suddenly disappeared. And it's very difficult to imagine that the Neanderthals became extinct for any other reason than that、uh, Homo sapiens came on the scene. Exactly what happened, I don't know. It's possible that there was direct conflict. It's possible that Homo sapiens triumphed in an ecological, in an economic kind of conflict. But one way or another, Homo sapiens arrived and the Neanderthals、uh, departed. And there's surely a causal relationship between these two things. There is no evidence of any actual conflict between Neanderthals and early moderns. The superior modern technology, like bows and arrows and spear throwers, don't show up until much later. Neanderthals were successful for a very, very long time. Their behavior is very similar to ours in terms of they buried their dead, they had fire, complex tools, shelter, clothing. But whether they are a different species from us or their genes are still around today, 
The fact is that they're a very compelling, interesting group of people. We want to know what happened to them. If Neanderthals were a separate species that did not interbreed with modern humans, they should have distinctly different DNA sequences. Anthropological genetics is in its infancy, but DNA sequences have been reported from four Neanderthal skeletons. In each instance, the Neanderthal DNA is distinct from that of modern humans, prompting some scientists to conclude that Neanderthals went extinct without contributing to the modern human genome.